Hello everyone, so it's literally been over a year since I started my journey of completing my main collection binder. Now that we've hit the one year anniversary mark, I figure now would be a great time to have another updated look at it, see what I've managed to get, what I've managed to miss, what I've managed to change, and all of that. So starting off, I saw the dual power promos here, Legendary Magician of White and Legendary Dragon, Dragon of Dark. No wait, I screwed that up. Ah, whatever. Anyways, uh, beyond that, we also have Ebon High Magician and Blue Eye Spirit Dragon, both in OCG Ulti. I decided to put these here as compliments towards the Magician of Dark and the Dragon of White as kind of the, you know, retrains of Dark Magician and Blue Eyes White Dragon, respectively. They're two cards I really dig the designs of, and the OCG Ultis do look extremely nice. So, I wanted them, I always wanted them, but for now, they're making their home right here. I feel it's an appropriate spot for them, and I'm super satisfied with it. Beyond that, I don't really think anything else is going to change in the front here. Maybe once uh, once we get Rush Duels, if we get Rush Duels stateside, I'll probably get a 7 Rhodes Magician, but beyond that, I'm not too picky. Moving forward, we now have our kind of Yugi, Kaiba, Joey little overview, so... I still have yet to replace these with their maximum gold versions. I just haven't really gotten around to it. No real rush on that, though. Then I decided, yeah, we're leaving this Dark Paladin here, the Blue Eyes Ultimate, and Black Skull, and then all three of these are Ultras, all from around the same time period. I managed to finally get an upgraded version of this. Not so much upgraded in terms of rarity, upgraded in terms of condition. At first I had an LP one that had a lot of real bad scuffs on the front, but now I have an actual near mint copy that I'm very satisfied with. Then of course all three tokens. Here we have the God card page, and the God card page is pretty standard. I mean, you have legal gods, Shonen Jump, Kazuki Takahashi gods. Well, they originally released in Shonen Jump, but these are the Mega Tin versions from 2019. Then we have the Illegal Gods, and I decided to put Millennium Revelation down here. I will be replacing this with the true name once I get that in. I recently got one of those. However, I decided that this is good enough here as it is. Also, in the event we ever get Herakathy here in the TCG, Herakathy is going to go right there. I feel, uh, you know, because obviously these kind of work together as a core, and then I have Sphere Mode, Phoenix, and then... Uh, you know, I just need one other Divine card to put there, but we're not getting that for a little while, so, you know, true name we'll have to do for now, since it does tie into that. Here we have the Exodia page. The only thing that's really changed here is I've decided to put Obliterate right in the middle of Exodia. Looks pretty good, I would have to say, in all honesty. Uh, this, really, there's nothing else to update. It's kind of the Duel's Kingdom Exodia page. I think it's perfect as it is. Just before we continue, I just want to remind you all that I stream on Twitch at least twice a week. That is twitch.tv slash Ranger. Additionally, I do a lot of deck testing and I do do viewer duels as well on EDO Pro. So come on over because we're planning a giveaway soon. Don't want to miss that. And moving on from there, we have our Dragon Legend page. So obviously we have our dragons and change up Legend of Heart, sorry. We have their Knight Forms and the Knight of Destiny. Then we have three Seal of Calco, so the originals, Ultra. Then we have Blue Text and Purple Text, and then Divine Serpent Geh. You know, I decided to keep these as they are because the gold version, the gold ultra version rather, that represents the Seal of Calcos that everyone has in the anime and uses, you know, the one solo layer. However, these two are meant to represent kind of the extra layers that Darts added onto his seal of Orichalcos during their final duel. And if we ever get any, Orichal any more Orichalcos cards, rather, I will replace them and uh, slot them in here. But beyond that, I'm pretty satisfied with this. No other major changes. Here's all the fusions from the Dragons of Legend series. So everything is matching in ultra rare looks really good even the dark magician girl the dragon knight i managed to get in just standard gold ultra so yeah it matches everything perfectly and uh yeah i love love the fact that there's 16 of them and they fit so nicely on here it's just beautiful then we have our yugi page so we have of course dark magician dark magician girl summon skull and buster blader bls magician of chaos their retrains, Magician's Valkyria, and Sorcerer of Dark Magic. Then I decided to actually take out the Apprentice of Malusion Magician and Oracle, uh, Palladium Oracle Mana, 
and I decided to put Obnoxious Celtic Guardian here and the Fearsome Karibo. So I decided to do that just because, you know, I feel like Celtic Guard was one of the kind of cooler old school Yugi cards that he had. You know, the one he would use it pretty often in the Duelist Kingdom era. But in addition to that, you know, the Obnoxious Celtic Guardian, it's got a cool effect. It's, you know, kind of neat for the time. It was basically just to prevent your opponent from beating over it. And then uh, Karibo, just because Karibo is just so iconic. Obviously, there are literally three decks in Yugi's Legendary decks that contain all iconic cards, so I can't represent everything on this one page. However, I feel these 16 cards are a pretty good representation. And mainly with these two, of course, it represents kind of their playability factor, because of course, both of these have either seen time on the Forbidden and Limited list, or in Dark Magician of Chaos's case, had to actually get an errata because it was so powerful. Then I also put Valkyria and Sorcerer Dark Magic here because Sorcerer Dark Magic will mirror where Blue Eyes Shining Dragon is later on, since it's also from the same non-canon movie. The Magician's Valkyria, I just feel kind of ties in with the Magician aesthetic with Dark Magician Girl. However, I may swap this out with a uh, Breaker of the Magical Warrior. I have the Master Collection Breaker, uh, Dark Revelation, and Ultra Legendary Collection Yugi's World. So I, I literally have all of them. It's just literally what I'm in the mood for. Also, uh, the one cool thing about this, this is not the tin version. As you can see, this is the ultra version from one of the Dark Revelations. So it's kind of a unique printing. So I was attracted to that aspect of it too. Moving on. So for Yugi's kind of extra deck and slash kind of ascended monsters as it were, we have Magician of Chaos, Magician of Black Chaos Max, Dark Paladin, this one's from the Speed Duel, finally. Ebenheim Magician from its original Dark Illusion print. Then we have Guy of the Magical Dragon Champions, Dark Cavalry, the Dark Magicians, Ebon Illusion Magician, then Strength and Unity with all our character fusions. So, obviously these represent the ritual aspect of Yami Yugi's deck. Dark Paladin is, of course, the ultimate fusion that Yugi honestly used or was able to use in the anime. Ebon Illusion and, or Ebon High and Ebon Illusion are, of course, the Xyz retrains. Then we have this, uh, Gaia retrain just to represent Gaia the Fierce Knight. Dark Cavalry also represents Gaia the Fierce Knight because it's supposed to be Dark Magician plus Gaia. Then I have the Dark Magicians together, which is such a cool looking card. It's an ascended form for both Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl on the same card. So I really dig that. Then Strength and Unity plus all the character fusions. So Black Skull Dragon for him and Joey. Dragon Master Knight for him and Kaiba. And then Red Eyes Dark Dragoon because... You know, it's it's basically a retrain of Dark Paladin, and Dark Paladin, fun fact, is my favorite card. One of, if not my favorite cards in the entirety of the game, so as much as I hate actually going up against it, I love it for its design and its effect. And uh, if I ever actually start playing with this, I also have a first dead uh, from the original set, uh, Dark Flare Knight, I could just easily slot in there instead. Moving on to spells real quick. Swords, Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, Polymerization and Dark Magic Twin Bears. I feel like those are kind of requisite anime references. Dark Magic Circle and Magician's Navigation here are to represent the modern era of support. Magic Cylinder, Mirror Force. Uh, the Magical Hats, Dark Renewal, and Black Illusion all represent kind of a bunch of other iconic spells and traps that either were used or were kind of made in reference to after the fact of the actual anime. I would, would love... Or, uh, yeah, I would love a First Dead Secret IOC, I believe it's IOC, mag magical uh, magic cylinder, but that's way out of the question. This is uh, First Dead Ultra, though, near mint, and this is First Dead Super near mint. So, you know, got that going for us. Here we have little Yugi's stuff, aka just Yugi without the Pharaoh. So, I got the Silence, their highest levels, their retrains, Valkyrion, then all three of the gadgets in Ultra. Gandora, Marshmallon, Gold Sark, and Monster Reborn to represent that last aspect of the ceremonial duel. I decided to replace Silent Paladin with Marshmallon because I felt like that was a pretty iconic card that he used. And also, lots of players actually kind of remember that card because it's such a kind of a troll little little stall card that's, you know, a bit wacky. I really do dig it. And uh, yeah, I'm super happy to have been able to get a first, 
or not first ed premium pack never had a first ed run but a nice and uh nice and very clean looking near mint that i could probably display here i had the magnet warriors here to go with valkyrion but i ultimately decided i want to represent the gadgets because those were very important to little yugi's play style all right so moving on now we have our blue eyes and our kaiba page so original uh the well original starter deck lob earth background tab background movie so i just decided to throw in a whole whack of blue eyes because you know it's seto freaking kaiba what else is there to say <clears throat> jokes aside really i just want to just kind of represent every art and i also had a spare of the secret rare blue eyes white dragon from the d sod pack so i want to put it here because i think it looks very nice then an ulti kind of light play mod play First Ed, Duels Pack Kaiba, Chaos Emperor Dragon, Vorse Raider, Blue Eye Shining Dragon, again mirroring that uh, Sorcerer Dark Magic from earlier. Then we got Priestess, Sage, Protector, and Master of the All Eyes of Blue series. So this is to represent Kaiba's modern support, of course. Moving on, we have XYZ Dragon Cannon, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, Blue Eyes Twin Burst Dragon, and Blue Eyes Alternative Ultimate Dragon. So we got basically, you know, the ones from the anime fusions from the anime besides like mystic horseman because we really don't care mystic horseman here anyways i just wanted to have i decided to kind of put them in attack order so obviously xyz is less attack than blue eyes ultimate and then blue eyes shining is less attack than alternative and sh or blue eyes twin is less than alternative and i put twin here beside alternative kind of like this just because of the fact that these came after the fact and they're kind of card game originals then Azure Eyes and Sp Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon, both secret, both look beautiful together. And I do actually have a PSA version of the Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon too, which is very nice and uh, definitely have to do a video showing off my PSA stuff. Then Shrink, Enemy Controller, Crush Card, Ring of Destruction, I do have a Lost Art too. Interdimensional Matter Transport, then Destined Rivals just to represent his spell and trap lineup. I think it's all pretty good, fits pretty well. Again, may replace that with the Lost Art, but I'm not uh, not too concerned about it otherwise. I may also get something else in place of Interdimensional Matter Transport, but I think Inter Interdimensional Matter Transport is kind of a neat card. And now we move on to Joey stuff. So, Red Eyes, Ferocious Flame Swordsman, Time Wizard, Jinzo, Goblin Attack Force, Fiend Mega Cyber, Gear Free, the Red Eyes Iron Knight, Scapegoat Secret, Lord of the Red, Thousand Dragon, Red Eyes Slash Dragon, and Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. So then, Obviously, this is my one from Starter Deck Joey, or this one's a booster pack tin one. My Starter Deck Joey one was earlier. I decided to put Ferocious Flame Swordsman here instead of the original Flame Swordsman just because, I, one, I don't have a Flame Swordsman. Two, I don't really feel like going out of my way to find a super rare Flame Swordsman. Three, I think this honestly just looks way cooler. Like the artwork wise, it looks way cooler than the original Flame Swordsman. That's my, even the alternate art Flame Swordsman too. That's my hot take. You know, talking about a fire monster and everything. So I decided to put this here instead. And I think it's one of the first Link monsters we actually have in here, too. Moving on, Joey used Goblin Tag Force a few times. The Fiend Mega Cyber is kind of a neat card that uh, he did use at one point or another. I may replace this with either... You see, the problem with, like, the dice cards is you kind of have to put them in as a pair. So you can't have just Skull Dice and just Graceful Dice. You'd have to have them, like, together. So, yeah, that's a whole other can of worms to get into. Gear Free, the Red Eyes Iron Knight, because Gear Free is a very iconic Joey card, and I decided to have it represent kind of the modern support as well. Scapegoat to scapegoat. No getting, no getting away from that one. Lord of the Red, because that's a very cool moment from the uh, Waking the Dragon arc that I want to represent, and I couldn't earlier because it never really fit into the criteria. Thousand Dragon and Red Eyes Slash Dragon. Thousand Dragon, of course, is iconic with Time Wizard, and Red Eyes Slash Dragon is once again representing the modern end. And Red Eyes Flare with the purple rarity from Legendary Duelist Season 1 to also also represent the modern stuff. I may also try to get a Red Eyes Black, uh, or Archfiend Black Skull Dragon to put in here as well. But really, I'm not super concerned about that. I'm pretty satisfied with this the way it is. And also, that thing hasn't been reprinted and its price is kind of obnoxious because apparently there's a, such thing as a Joey tax. Which is ironic because he's broke most of the time. But anyways... So then, we have Tomb World, Two Table of Contents, Relinquish, Thousand Eyes, 
Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, Red Eyes Toon Dragon, Toon Summon Skull, and Toon Dark Magician Girl. As you can see, this is perfectly representing the villain known as uh, Mako Tsunami. Okay, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, this is the Pegasus portion of the binder, just representing the Relinquished and Thousand Eyes, uh, Thousand Eyes cards, but also a healthy amount of representation of the Toon lineup. Really, nothing I'd really want to change here. You know, the Blue Eyes Toon is so super iconic. Red Eyes Toon is just something I had on hand, and it also mirrors the Blue Eyes quite nicely. Toon Summon Skull is probably my favorite Toon, just uh, straight up, and then. Two Dark Magician Girl is pretty, a pretty iconic one and he consistently used after the fact, so it's another good one to keep here. Sad to settle on these four for now, though if there's new tunes in the future, you never know, things might get shifted around a bit. However, I don't think I'll be able to fit Toon BLS or Toon Harpy Lady in here anywhere. Then we have kind of representing villains slash competent duelists in Duel's Kingdom. Dark Necker Fear for Bakura, and this also kind of goes to represent him later on in the Battle City arc and stuff like that. The Harpy Lady Sisters and Pet Dragon to represent Mai, because they were uh, one of the other finalists in the Duel's Kingdom kind of tournament. Then Desperado Barrel Dragon to represent Bandit Keith. This may get replaced, actually, with the Lost Art of Barrel Dragon, because, uh, because I, I have that now. But for now, it's just this. So yeah, like I said, Pakura, and then the finalists in Battle City, in not Battle City, Duel's Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Moving on towards Battle City, though, so we have the Arcana Dark Magician, Lava Golem, the Winged Dragon of Ra, and Blaze Cannon. Blaze Cannon may eventually be phased out in place of, of uh, a revival jam just to represent the strings duel, but I feel like this kind of represents eh, most of Merrick's iconic kind of uh, iconic kind of duels. So you have the Arcana Dark Magician, which also has the first appearance of Dark Magician Girl herself. Lava Golem is kind of treated as the ace monster in Duel Links, and then Wing Dragon of Raw is, of course, the Wing Dragon of Raw. And also, I wanted kind of a good place to have the alternate art that wasn't uh, that was actually away from the initial God Card page. I did just kind of want to have this, you know, as its own kind of separate thing. Then Blaze Cannon is just here as a bit of a placeholder. It was originally going to be Metal Reflex go or Egyptian God Slime, but I decided. Uh, yeah, I'm not dropping like 40 bucks on Egyptian God Slime at this moment, so we'll go with Blaze Cannon. It's like a, it was a $1 card I picked picked up in my card at some point, and then we'll put a revival jam, get a super revival jam and throw it in here later on. Representing filler arc villains, though, Shinado to represent, of course, Noah. Last turn to also represent Noah just because it has the two spirit monsters, Yamato Dragon and I don't, can't pronounce the other one. Castle of Stromberg and all the goddesses, plus Mystery of the Time Goddess for the kind of Kaiba Corp Grand Prix. And now we're on to Desod. So I don't think anything has changed here. I think Desod is like 100% done. I am perfectly happy with this. There's nothing I would really want to move. I even have a fair amount of Desod cards still in my kind of uh, storage. And yeah, no, it's... Uh, it's good. I have the Dark Magician Girl Panorama. I have these two gods since they kind of appeared in the uh, in the sets for the Desod stuff just to cap them. You know, the new Dark Magician, the new Blue Eyes, Duza, and then Palladium Oracle Mahad. I may want a Secret Mahad, but then again, I also like having all of this in Ultra Rare. Then the Gold and Silver Gadgets, Crystal Dragon, and Deep Eyes White Dragon. Gandora X, Chaos Max, Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, and then Nova Trinity. So yeah. All right, now then we're gonna move on to GX with our Elemental Heroes. Starting off, of course we have Wink Rebo, Flame Wingman, Neo, Subel, my favorite Elemental Hero. Our Vanilla Heroes, Generation Next, uh, Bubble Man, Wild Heart, and an Ultimate Rare OTS Pack, Stratos. Yeah, I got rid of my gold one because I got an ultimate rare. Got it for a real bro deal of a price, so I just had to go for it. Neo Spatians, 
And uh, we're still waiting on Kluger to be imported in TCG, so that's what that slot's there for. Then I got a, I upgraded this poly to a secret rare one. Super po a secret poly, secret super poly, ultra miracle fusion, and then hero flash, just to represent, you know, the emergency call and all that. Circling back here, I will just mention that Burstinatrix is actually getting a Lost Ark promo, so that will probably go in here instead. And then I'm going to have to find a hollow version of Avion, Clayman, and uh, Sparkman. So, you know, that's going to be fun. Oh, and Bubble Man, too. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Except for my wallet. But anyways. Moving forward. Nothing really has changed here. I finally upgraded this Aqua Neos to a First Dead Near Mint from the Unlim I originally had. Then uh, we're still waiting on an Air Neos, either reprint or just... I'm gonna bite the bullet and buy a $100 ancient ass card. I am not looking forward to that day. And uh, beyond that, I have a few of the vanilla hero fusions, including my very crispy near mint uh, shining flare wingman here from its uh, original scent. First head two. Then I got a super rainbow Neos because all the versions of rainbow Neos are noxiously expensive. And moving on from Rainbow Neos, we have our all of our uh, Neos kind of fusions, including our multi fusions like uh, Nebula and uh, what's this one called again? I honestly forget. Cosmo Neos, that's it. And then Divine Neos. Then we have Gaia, all of our Omni heroes. You know. Moving on from there, our last little page of GX goodness for at least for Jane's side of things, we have E Emergency Call. Miracle Contact, favorite hero just to represent that kind of first duel with uh, with Professor Crowler and everything with Ancient Gear Golems. I also kind of want Ulti Skyscraper, Skyscraper, but God, an Ulti Skyscraper is going to cost a lot of money, so, you know. I decided to also get a Ma'at here just to represent the GX manga because, one, this thing looks freaking sick, and two, this thing is canonically a fusion of Light and Darkness Dragon and Wing Karibo. That is literally the summoning conditions. Tribute a fairy and a dragon. Yeah, it's kind of absurd that out of those two you get this guy, but you know, it, it looks sick. So, you know, we're just taking it as it is. Here's our just kind of Wing Karibo support, including level 9 and level 10. Then we have Dark Fusion and Wild Cyclone for our evil hero kind of representation. Sabatiel and then Honest Neo says that reference to the final opening of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX2, in Japan at least. Then, over here we still have our Rivals page, so Ultimate Pound to represent Ancient Gears. I decided to put the Arm Dragon level 10 here just because it has the 110, 100,000, 10,000 Manjinome Sunda thing going on and I really dig that reference. So, yeah, it was either that or I just got a ghost from the past ultra level arm dragon level 10 and I decided, you know what, this guy's sick. He is truly sick looking, so we're gonna go with him. Cyberblader, Tyranno House of Perry's ultimate conductor Tyranno. Uh, Shining Phoenix Enforcer and Plasma to represent Astro Phoenix, so that's, you know, his elemental hero, one of his elemental heroes. And then, of course, Plasma's, Plasma's like to the most iconic Destiny hero outside of maybe Malicious. And I mean, now we're going to have a new one to the uh, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer, but you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. You know, it, that thing will only terrorize the meta in a little while. So beyond that though, we also have an ulti first ed Volcanic Doomfire here. Shout out to my boy Pain96. It's been God knows how many hundreds of days between uh, us getting good pyro cards. And then uh, Fossil Warrior Skull King for Jim Crocodile Cook. For Jesse Anderson here, we have Rainbow Dragon, Rainbow Over Dragon, Crystal Bond, and of course Sapphire Pegasus, because Sapphire Pegasus is one of the kind of coolest, coolest Crystal Beasts in my opinion. May replace that with something else, but really I'm not too picky right now, so we'll just leave it as is. And then the other thing was, okay, to kind of circle back a little bit to right here, Ancient Gear Golem. So, the only hollow versions of the original Ancient Gear Golem are pretty much like its original print and one of the Dark like Revelations or Dark Beginning sets. I think it's one of those two. Regardless, it's very expensive and I do not want to pay that much for, you know, an ultra rare kind of binder warmer. 
So, outside of Air Neos, but even Air Neos, that's going to be a very rough band-aid to pull off. So, the thing that we just had announced was that in February of next year, hopefully, pending any possible uh, delays and whatnot, we are actually going to be getting a legendary, uh, not legendary, a Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Speed Duel box. And it's supposed to probably have the same format as the Battle City box. So I am very much hoping we get a reprint of the original Ancient Gear Golem in Secret Rare, kind of the way we got like Dark Paladin and a bunch of other kind of old school cards like that in the Speed Duel Secret Rare. Really hoping for that. Also hoping for Air Neos in that. I think that's going to be the one thing that prevents me from going and pulling the trigger on Air Neos is hoping it gets a reprint in there. But yeah, overall, I'm really hoping we get a reprint of the original uh, original Ancient Gear Golem in that uh, Speed Duel Speed Duel Secret Rare. Anyways, for Zane's stuff, so Cyber Dragon, Cyber Twin, I finally got this version of Cyber and Dragon, which was very nice. The Chimera Attacks, then Cyber Dark Impact, Cyber Eternity Dragon, Infinity, and Seeger. This is probably, this is really just a bench warmer for the Cyber Dark Net, or Cyber Dark End Dragon that will be coming with the starter deck that got delayed, unfortunately, so that's probably... This will go out, that'll go in more likely than not, and I may even take this out and maybe just put one of the cyber, uh, one of the other cyber dark cards in there. However, I may just keep it because, you know, it has the name of one of the worst, one of the most obnoxious sets of all time. I'm not going to say it's the worst set because it's technically not. <sighs> you know, Instant Fusion and, uh, Vanity Fiends are a hell of a things and all the barrier statues too. But yeah, you know, we'll, uh, we'll decide on that later. Excuse me one sec. Ooh, I am talking a lot. Next up we have the Sacred Beast page. Literally nothing has changed here since last time. Yeah, so we have all of them, their attacks, and then just kind of representing the story of GX. So the gates open, the dude plays Fallen Paradise. Uh, Jaden uses this to boost up his Electrum, and then he beats beats them the first time, and then this is used when they use him in Season 3. And now, let's go fast, because our heart beats in Hyperdrive with 5Ds. Sorry, that was a horrible segue. I really need to work on these. Anyways, 5Ds is one of those things that it's once Vrains gets bumped to a new binder, this entire area is going to get another, um, a whole other page to just breathe because it is way too tight. And yeah, I need to just work on it. But beyond that, some new notable additions. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Some notable additions. I decided to put Scarlight here just because I needed my secret rare, uh, secret rare Red Dragon Archfiend to play in my deck, actually, in my Edison deck. Red Supernova Dragon, because that's, of course, the new version Nova Dragon. Ruddy Rose, because that finally came out in Lightning Overdrive. Then, you know, I got all this, so representing Crow, Trudge, Carly, Rex Godwin, and the Dark Signers. Then we have our, uh, the members of Iliaster plus Bruno all coming hailing from the future, so they all got this one row. Then some of the most iconic TG cards, including this French Halberd Cannon, which I, you know, made a oopsie and got a French Halberd Cannon. And then here we have the Norse Gods, and I gotta fit one other random card there, probably something from the Legendary Hero deck, since, you know, that's the thing. Then the Malefics, just to represent Paradox in the movie, so... Stardust, Blue Eyes, Red Eyes, Cyber End, Gear, Paradigm, Paradox, and so, you know, I think it works pretty well. And now, let's high five this guy with some Zexel. So, uh, Zexel is another thing that's going to, Yuma in particular is another character that's going to be getting an extra page to breathe with once I, uh, once I reorganize and shuffle some things around. But overall, you know, we're going to be probably hitting on the same points. You know, Utopia stuff, the automatic, automatic Pia stuff. Then uh, we finally kind of finished this area, though. So 
We have all these galaxy cards. We have all the sharks kind of main Xyz. Then we have all the rank ups kind of ordered from the first appearance to the last one appearing in Zexel at least. Also, uh, as part of Yuma's stuff, of course, uh, the new support from like Lightning Overdrive and Overlay Universe, God, I hope we get Overlay Universe, will eventually be will eventually be reflected in there too. Then we have all the Baryon numbers, including CXC's Baryon Hope, and that's really about it for uh, Zexel, or Zexel stuff for now. Again, it's going to have to get an extra page just to breathe, but for now I'm pretty satisfied with it. Now then, we have our Arc V stuff, so... I'd argue Arc V is probably the, like, outside of maybe dual monsters, is probably one of the most complete areas. And yeah, that's just because it's really, really kind of easy to do. And uh, I was actively playing at this time, so, you know, I was just able to get a lot of it. So, we have our kind of Dimension Dragons, their upgraded forms, their human forms, then kind of Yuya's kind of famous pendulum scales, kind of the upgrades for it, kind of the extra cards that support it, and, you know, some cheeky references like Duelist Alliance and Soul Pendulum. So yeah, pretty standard stuff here. Then here I have an Alti Odd Eyes and then Alti Odd Eyes Rebellion, Nirvana High Penalty, Odd Eyes Raging Dragon. The, uh, this is supposed to eventually, this is going to move once we eventually also get in the TCG Odd Eyes Wing Dragon, then Odd Eyes uh, Odd Eyes Venom Dragon, Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon, and uh, the Arc Rebellion Xyz Dragon, just to kind of represent the new support with the Xyz Dragon stuff. Then I got Zark, and it's kind of human version here with uh, Celestial Magician. Magician of Hope is a bit of an oddball that may go into the Yuma section, just because it is very clearly a kind of homage to Utopia. And then the vanilla Odd Eyes, uh, Odd Eyes, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, that's just, it was a TCG exclusive card, and it's just really cool. It really synergizes with the deck pretty well, so I feel it also rep it also representing Yuya's Pendant, you know, it's a good thing to include here. Then here I got my Ghosts. Um, the only thing I've picked up is I managed to pick up Firewall Dragon since last time. I picked up the Ghost, I picked up the Ulti, I pulled this Collector Rare Snake Rain, I pulled the Cyber Alti Alternate Art Cyber en Cyber Dragon, and I even got a Halk for another bro deal of a price, so pick that up. Um, moving on, we have the Vrain stuff. The Vrain stuff is straight up going to be yeeted into another binder, and I even have plans on expanding it. At the very least, I'm going to probably be able to expand. Uh, so, the idea with this is this will probably stay exactly as is. Then I'm gonna have all the like code talkers. So I'm probably gonna, yeah, gonna have a like two rows dedicated to the code talkers. So it'll probably be decode, decode talk extended, then like all the other attributes, and then like maybe Dark Templar adding Nister just to represent the fact that it's supposed to be a corrupted version of decode talker. Then underneath that, I'm gonna have kind of a row just to represent Soul Burner. So that'll be Sanctuary, Sunlight Wolf. Uh, what's the link? The, the other version, this version of Heat Leo, actually. I'll put the, be putting the starter deck version here instead. And then finally, uh, a uh, Secret Rare Pyro Phoenix. I literally have them all. It's just a matter of getting the room. And then, uh, then it would lead into the next page, which would then be the Boral Top Logic stuff. I also need a second Boral Sword, and I'm gonna need, I'm gonna get the new Boral stuff from Burst of Destiny once that eventually comes out. So that's gonna be cool as heck. I kind of had to put the Collector Rare Coolia. Again, got it for a bro price. Ulti Debris and Ulti uh, Book of Moon. Managed to get that for a good trade. I got to trade it off my alphas for it. And then just that, just to kind of tie into the brain stuff and fill it in. And finally, you know, this little page here. So yeah, overall, that is the current status of my collection. I... I'm extremely proud of it. I'm very happy with where we currently are. I think we have a few things left to do. I have a small spreadsheet of things I'm really actively looking for. But once I really get some good time to... Good time and space. Space is another thing that you really need when organizing cards. So, like, I need, like, a whole day where I just, like, take up a whole office space for, like, two, three days in a row. 
and just like organize my cards and get that other binder rolling and whatnot. So yeah, we're just gonna do a quick flip through. Overall, I'm I'm satisfied. I'm I'm happy. You know, it makes me feel good to have so many cards, kind of that I've always wanted. A lot of dream cards in here. A lot of cards I really wanted as when I was younger. And you know, it's um, it's very satisfying. It's very fulfilling to me to be able to have this collection. And I'm really happy. Again, I went with these uh, four by three binders, so I have uh, have so many slots to just kind of fill in because it ends up, you know, giving me a lot of extra room to play with. And in most cases, I end up using that room straight up. And like, if this were just a three by three binder, it would, would make a lot of setups awkward. So if, you know, if you're building your own collection up or anything, I hope I give you some ideas. I can't wait to have things a little more solidified, but for now, again, I'm extremely satisfied and, you know, I'm happy that you know, I'm happy where we are. And I'd like to thank everyone who did stick around and watch this far. Or even just half, anything over halfway. I appreciate that. And yeah. You all take care. Have yourselves a good day. I'll catch you when I'm live one day on my live streams. So make sure to follow my Twitch for that. Otherwise, have yourself a great day.